goes 30 cents, 70 percent. Uh, this is pretty standard now. Uh, normally it's uh, US 99 cents per download, and we've got iTunes, Google, Amazon, and it's fairly simple in that way uh, to get your music on there and sell it and get paid basically. Uh, generally, the uh, next step is the newer, the on demand streaming services, which is more where my talk is based around. Uh, these are your Spotify, Audio, and Google's got a new service out there as well. Uh, these all work on a system that's a bit different from your uh, digital download model. Uh, you're looking at the same kind of revenue cut, so you've got 30% goes to the actual streaming service, and 70% goes back to the publisher, the artist, all the rest of them. Uh, the way that the revenue is divided, and the payments are calculated, however, differs from your digital download. Uh, the overall they take what that 7% chunk of the pie is, you grab the, how many millions of dollars that is, uh, then over a month they take the total number of streams and you divide by that revenue to come out to a per stream rate of the royalties. Uh, however, this depends on whether you're a major label, independent or um, self like titles in this case. Okay, so the streaming agreements differ basically. So you've got your major labels. Uh, major labels generally will get have will get more money, probably get better streaming rates because they've got the power in the market. Uh, and then you filter down if you're independent label and unsigned artist area. Usually the unsigned artist and independent label groups actually are generally very close together on how much you're getting paid for the streaming services anyway. Uh, the major, all these agreements, however, are bound by confidential agreements between the service and the um, label, or the service and the aggregator. So you can't actually, as an artist, find out what the overall total number of plays were for uh, for the total number, for the whole system. You can't find out what the total revenue was to divide to figure out what the streaming rate is. So when you're just a small artist, you kind of have to just take what they give, give you uh, and not actually understand how much you're going to get paid from month to month from these streaming services. Unlike when you come across to the uh, iTunes model where at least you can say you're getting 69 cents per download, for example, and you can at least say that is a fixed rate of income. So we've got internet radio as well, I've uh, skipped over internet radio. Generally, the rates are similar to what the streaming media is. However, you do change from, uh, you get a higher royalty rate on the, street, uh, on the internet radio, for example. Uh, this is because you can't uh, pre-select tracks, for example, they're all selected anyway, um, and there's different deals in that system. So I'll skip. Okay, so how do you actually get your music onto these services? Uh, for iTunes, for all hundreds of the different services, uh, you can use what's called an uh, aggregator. Now, there's two major aggregators in the market, which is uh, TuneCore and CD Baby. What they offer is you pay a fixed price and you get your music onto a service. Uh, so, for example, with the TuneCore system, you're paying less money upfront, so you pay uh, $30 for a first year, and then $50 each subsequent year to have your music listed for an album. Uh, however, you keep 100% of the sales. So, for example, if you get uh, $0.69 cents from an iTunes download, you get $0.69 cents from the TuneCore. Uh, they work by basically signing agreements with all the major services, uh, you upload your music and they will distribute it automatically with uh, rec uh, covers, all that kind of stuff, up to all these services without you having to get them all. They also collect the money on the back end and they will pay you usually month to month. Uh, CD Baby is a different model in that you pay higher for the album, however, uh, it's listed forever. Uh, however, they take 99% of your rate. So 69 cents gets cut by the 9% that they take off the top. Okay, so now we're, um, this is where I start in the so this is uh, all the fun stuff. Okay, so basically I came to this 
Yeah, uh, thinking, okay, uh, a lot of people have been complaining about their streaming services, uh, pulling the music off it, uh, saying the rates of royalties aren't high enough, um, they're not getting paid enough. Um, so I thought, okay, uh, what's the problem with these streaming services? How difficult it is to get on there? Uh, also, what are the limits in these systems? Um, how do they detect against fraud? Um, do they pay the same, for example, for a one second track or for a 10 minute track, for example? Um, so I basically thought, okay, I'm just gonna create some music, create, go through one of these aggregators and put together an album and see what happens. So, uh, basically I uh, put together an album, listed it, paid the money, and this was the result. So this is uh, the iTunes account. Okay, so if you have a look at the times, for example, so the times for all these tracks I've got, I went to about 30 seconds, so I carved things up differently and just randomised how long a track would be. So I guessed about 30 seconds should be okay. So I've got 30 seconds, 25 seconds, 17 seconds, all the way down to eight seconds on this album. Now for the music, I both had to put together something and I'm not a very good musician, of course. Uh, so I went and grabbed uh, some randomly generated MIDI files, uh, put them through a sound font, and just recorded the result and cut them up. <laughs> I didn't really think. So here's the result of what happened. So you can see I didn't really care what the words uh, actually came out of this I want my file, I don't care what it is. Okay, so we've got it right up there, and I'm actually on these services by getting a credit card out of Okay, so, phase one worked, I've got my album out there, no one's going to listen to it, it's terrible, I'm happy with that. So I'm thinking, what do I do for phase two? I've got to get someone playing this music, of course. And then I had an Amazon account. So I said, okay, why don't I use this great free Amazon account and start by playing with it? Uh, so I've got to work out, okay, uh, I've set up an EC2 instance, I use the default thing. Now I've got to work out how do I actually play the music over and over again to get myself uh, royalty basically. So I set up the default Amazon account, I then looked around for command line clients for Spotify. Uh, Found an open source one called DSpotify, um, which would only work with premium accounts as I found out, and tried to play around with it. Couldn't really get it working. I'd get things working on my desktop and then try it on the Amazon one and it wouldn't work. Uh, so it was a fail, of course. So next I said, okay, well, how about I just put GUI up on Amazon? So I went with the Debian one, installed the GUI window manager. Spotify actually have uh, I think it's still experimental Linux client as well, and just used a free account and finally got it working. So it was so to envision it, it's just a like a uh, if a if a tree falls it falls in the forest and no one hears it, does it fall? It's the same with my music, since it's playing on a server in an Amazon cloud to a sound card that's not actually out putting any sound. <laughs> it's just going to be uh, uh, null. Uh, not the end for example. So this kind of worked. Alright, so I've got it playing, the uh, things are streaming properly. Uh, there's an interesting thing where if you don't have a sound card set up on some of these, uh, some of the clients, for example, it'll just keep skipping tracks. Uh, so you don't actually get the track to play, but it just keeps going through a playlist, for example. Um, or they won't play at all. So I've got that working. So I've created three more Amazon accounts and three test client accounts. So for these I just basically used uh, prepaid credit cards which are available down on Australia Post, um, threw some uh, credit on it and uh, signed up to these services. The reason for that was to work out okay, what the royalty rates are if you're a plain paying customer. Uh, so an example is Spotify, you've got three levels of accounts. You're looking at the free level where you get the advertising. Uh, you've got uh, Unlimited where you get uh, playing on the PC, but you don't get it on the uh, mobile, for example. And you've got premium where you can just play it on um, your uh, desktop, mobile, uh, you 
you can also download tracks, I believe, as well, and save them to your hard drive. Uh, however, uh, I went with the unlimited account because I just wanted to play stuff unlimited and work out the royalties. Also set up uh, for Spotify, however, <coughs> trying to set these up with a prepaid credit card, it wouldn't actually accept the credit card uh, details generally because I think it was flagged as a uh, prepaid rather than a person's actual credit card. So I decided, okay, look, I'll just put it through my own PayPal account for those three accounts. What, what works can happen? So I hit a few bugs, of course, when I'm trying to set up these uh, playing, uh, clients playing over and over again. Uh, because I'm using Linux, Flash is terrible, uh, and all these clients are generally coded with some kind of Flash interaction. Um, web clients are buggy as well, so you'll be playing tracks over and over, and I want them to go for 24 hours, for example, and they just stop playing. Uh, so I just wrote together a script and threw it through a cron job and just had it every hour or so making sure it's clicking stop play res resetting the machine uh, and just playing again. Okay, so I wait about a month or so and then look at the account and I start getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for example, uh, audio 775, so that was for the first week or so of playing around with it. So I'm starting to actually see money come in, so it takes a while generally. Uh, to actually get paid around three months. Uh, so it's a small amount, but it's starting to, it's registering the plays. Uh, I also made a sale on iTunes Europe, my only one. Very excited with that one. The good thing is also the guy that bought the, I don't know who bought it because he's never going to get told anyway, but that track is only eight seconds long, so really I'm not sure that could be one of the highest grossing. <laughs> I got moved as well, so I'm finding all these all these different little uh, services as well. So people like might just flip through and listen to something once, and you get paid half a cent. Uh, so it's Xbox and there's last two people. Xbox actually plays pretty well. So there we go, center stream I think or something like that. Okay, so this is uh, some idea of what the royalty payments were over from February to July. Uh, so these are all in cent amounts, so you're looking at uh, around about half a cent. So they go up and down, you generally find it averages out to be about half a cent overall. Um, I believe that the higher amounts in uh, Spotify are actually because I had one client on a premium account. So they actually tear out the streaming royalty. So if you've got a free account, you get paid a lot less because it's calculated through uh, the total amount of advertising they get. Uh, however, with a premium account, you get higher that royalty payments back to the artist, which is pretty good. All right, so I've hit my first roadblock, however. I get this email. So I've been disabled from Spotify. I was trying to work out, okay, what went wrong? Did they catch me when I was playing things over 24 hours a day, seven days a week, <laughs> over and over? Um, did they check the IPs because it's from an Amazon account? I wasn't hiding anything, I wasn't really you know, doing anything um, to hide myself. However, I found out this was not from my streaming, this is from when I set the accounts up. Because I was going through the same PayPal account, the accounting department obviously had a flag on there and went, oh wait, okay, uh, this is kind of weird, and actually looked up the accounts. They never actually looked up the album though, so the album is still up there, it was just those user accounts that were uh, banned basically. Okay, so after a week or so of playing this, I flick onto audio and look on the top charts. And naturally I <laughs> Now at that point I was kind of going, uh oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> When is someone going to realise that this is number one and the rest of the artists are not? <laughs> like, oh, okay, I've uh, well, done it once, I thought. If I might as well make another album. <laughs> so, <okay. laughs> now, for this album, I changed it a little bit. Instead of having randomised patterns, I just I found, okay, since I've learned Spotify, okay. If you have a track under 30 seconds, you don't get any um, you don't get any popularity bar on Spotify. So it doesn't tell you how many times it's been played. 
it just uh, doesn't tell you the statistics on their site. However, if you're over 30 seconds, you do. So all these tracks are, of course, 31 seconds long. <laughs> uh, so for an example of my beautiful musicianship. <laughs> Again, this is artistry. <laughs> so each of these albums were 50 track long, no, 50 tracks long as well. The reason for 50 tracks was the uh, aggregator went, went through a CD baby. If you went over 50 tracks, you had to send a CD in. Under 50 tracks, they just let you upload music straight up. So I went, okay, well, 50 tracks it is. Uh, another good thing about CD Baby is there's no limits on the number of CDs for that $50 you can upload. Um, so I never got around to it, but one of the ideas I had was, okay, maybe if I made a few, made 100 albums, pay 50 bucks and just made disc one, disc two, disc three, and see how that went. However, I never actually got around to implementing that because I just didn't want to go over and over and try and go through that horrible, horrible website to uh, put stuff up. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is, I think, after about a month. Um, I have an idea. The way audio works, however, is uh, a little different. This is the actual Australia chart, not the international chart. I think if I was on the international chart, I probably would have caught a lot quicker, of course. Um, however, because I was in the Australia chart, it's only Australia subscribers that start to see that top chart thing. One of the good things about the top chart stuff as well in audio is that the way that they calculate the... Uh, they've got automatic radio playing that you can actually uh, just hit the radio button, they will automatically populate their radio station. They take all that data from the top chart. <laughs> <laughs> so that went through and I'm like, okay, I'm getting, you know, my own things listening to it. But you start to have other people listening to this <laughs> They start to, it's in their radio play, and they don't understand why it's being added. <laughs> because when you join the service, it'll just add music to this radio station, and it'll play, and so you get mixed in with other legitimate artists. <laughs> Because of this, I started actually getting views. Sound. So 
over and over I kept trying, you know, virtual sound cards, all these kind of things. I didn't really want to spend too much time on it or build something just for this silly thing. However, I found, okay, if I, when an RD came into the box and you click a couple of switches in Windows, and then you actually can get sound out over the RDP link. When I was doing it, however, the RDP link, when you cut it, it cuts the sound card, of course, and everything fails. But you don't know because you're logged in through RDP. You, you log out and you go, oh wait, nothing's working. You log back in and it works again. So basically what how I architected instead was, okay, I took one of the uh, uh, EC2's Linux ones, opened the uh, sessions to RDP over that, and basically went, so when I was logging in, you just go through the main RDP server kind of thing, and then to each little client. That meant that the RDP link was always up, so it always had a sound card, meaning you could keep playing. Um, additionally, uh, going through the Windows clients, there was a pain in the ass in scripting things as well. So I couldn't script any keyboard commands like when the using a Linux client, for example. I had to basically try and do it through mouse click events. And then you start to get all the fun things with um, scripting something on a remote server with uh, the new Windows protections. If it, cut, if it goes to a screensaver or, or um, you cut, uh, you close a window, for example, <coughs> it will uh, stop actually responding to those mouse clicks. So you'd have things stalled and things. Eventually, I worked it out just to basically uh, whack it all together with a bad script, for example. Okay. So about a month or two in, I expanded out and tried to use that new Tostra service set. Okay, look, let's see the Tostra service set. <coughs> because there's basically about 100 of these different services now out there. Um, overall, the streaming ones, there's at least 20 in the world, 30. Um, give that one. Now, MIG is the Telstra one, so what I had to do was move all the server instances, because I had them in the US, and I had to move them through uh, Amazon all the way over to the uh, Sydney data center sold from an Australian IP to access these services. No, no, okay, great, just go click and let it run. I wait about a week, and then I get this email. So basically, uh, they so what happened was uh, the MOG service had actually found out, wait, you've been streaming this over and over again from first May. And so they basically removed all the, uh, uh, they removed the albums and the users, which is what you probably would expect someone has to do. However, I have a feeling this wasn't actually an automatic system. This was more because no one's actually using the service. Um, <laughs> because when you look at the RDO and Spotify ones, overall, internationally, it's probably not that many, and you wouldn't notice it too much. But this one, however, you'd notice it because I was probably a lot more popular than anything else. So I was, uh, I was over in Korea working, and then, okay, look, oh, I'm bored, I'll make another album. And this time, I'll make it with a bit better music, but I don't want to compose the music, so I'll just grab it off the public domain. So I created that. <laughs> tracks. Basically, I'll just do it again and see how this goes. Okay, so uh, I'll play it. was more <laughs> 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 so I was obviously 
are going well, and they like my music. <laughs> they really need to prove need to prove it. Right. So I was on Spotify as well, and with Spotify, one of the great things is they start they give you recommendations. Uh, and the recommendation engine obviously knows really good music because it brought up this guy. Now this guy is his name, the name of him is Scam Artist. <laughs> Which is great. And I'm like, oh okay, that's interesting. And then I looked at it and went, okay, when was this published? And this guy basically was doing this stuff before I started doing it, and I think he did it in 2012. And so he was an artist in Las Vegas, and he said, oh, look, this had the same idea I did. However, he didn't think, oh, I think I'll set up a lot of computers. I think he had his own home computer streaming over and over again. So he wasn't as popular as I was, but <laughs> he had the right 